Hi, I'm Gabrielle Enta with Drug Topics, and today I'll be speaking with Tim Suther, Senior Vice President of Data Solutions at Change Healthcare, about the company's new social determinants of health analytics and its application in the pharmacy setting. First, here's the latest news from drugtopics.com. Results from an interim analysis for AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine demonstrated that the vaccine candidate met primary efficacy endpoint of preventing COVID-19 infection. The United Kingdom-based study evaluated two dosing regimens. The first, where the vaccine is administered as a half dose followed by a full dose at least one month later, showed 90% efficacy. The other regimen, two full doses at at least one month apart, demonstrated 62% efficacy. Overall, investigators reported an average vaccine efficacy of 70%, with all results deemed statistically significant. And that's the latest news from drugtopics.com. Now here's my interview with Tim Suther. So to get us started on the topic today, um, what are the social determinants of health and what are some of the ways that they inform health disparities in the U.S.? That's a, it's a great question. I'm delighted to uh, be with you here this afternoon. Hope you and yours are uh, safe and healthy in these uh, uh, challenging times. So social determinants are, are frankly life circumstances. So much of healthcare is about the care that is rendered by your doctor or the prescription that your pharmacy provides to you. But the reality is, is that 80% of your health and wellness, uh, in fact, people's health and wellness, is determined by these life circumstances. That is, what happens outside the doctor's office, what uh, happens outside uh, the, uh, the pharmacy. And they include things like our our health literacy, our income, our wealth, our access to care, uh, whether or not we are caring for a, a loved one or whether or not we're a, a single parent, all of those things affect our, uh, our health and uh, well-being. And the challenge is, is that healthcare overall does not really do a great job of collecting that information. And that's the problem we set out to solve. How do we connect what happens in the doctor's office to uh, you know, to life circumstances, which is what happens to us when we're out living, living our lives. I look forward to talking to you about it today. Great. And then now with these disparities are also showing themselves with the COVID-19 infection rates and outcomes. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit more, how SDOH informs that? Uh, indeed. So when the pandemic was uh, first declared in uh, March, we uh, began immediately isolating uh, COVID encounters. So uh, today we see about 40-ish uh, uh, plus percent of the positive COVID diagnoses in America the day after a, uh, a clinician makes that uh, diagnosis. So we see tests, we see diagnoses, we see when people are admitted into the hospital, we see their uh, discharge uh, status. And in March, we, uh, we made a decision. You know, it said that if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. And we elected to go together with the brightest uh, healthcare minds in America. And we began making it available to uh, academic medical centers. And right now, over 70 academic medical centers are using our data to better understand COVID, uh, how the disease progresses, whether interventions work, and the impacts on the, uh, the overall healthcare system. And the reality is, is that we, uh, each of us experience healthcare differently. Uh, and uh, in this time uh, also of uh, social unrest, you know, most of the research and our data supports it indicates that uh, people of color, uh, whether African-American or Latinx, uh, they are experiencing COVID on a per capita rate far more intense than uh, those that are Caucasian and uh, those that are Asian, Asian American. And if you want to understand, if you want to do something about that, you got to have data to understand it. And uh, that's uh, that's been our role. So you touched upon why Change Healthcare decided to create this resource. Um, how does current practice utilize SDOH in treating patients now? Is there a widespread of understanding of the critical need for addressing SDOH? Um, in creating more equitable health outcomes? Well, sadly, the uh, healthcare system does not do a great job of capturing that information uh, organically. There's just 
uh, too much friction in the process. You know, I spent uh, a lot of my career uh, in financial services and in uh, the advertising world. And when I got into the healthcare business about four years ago, I was shocked to find out that information that was so crucial in determining, you know, our health outcomes just was not available uh, in the healthcare system. So we set out about a year ago to begin to identify the best sources for that data and then to integrate it with our, our claims data. And that actually was harder to do uh, than you might uh, imagine. I felt like uh, Thomas Edison, you know, I'd found uh, all 10,000 ways not to invent the light bulb until we did. So today we've got this great data set that links de-identified claims with the most important social determinants of health. And then we make it available to payers and providers alike uh, in a portrait service that allows them to understand for their local area what social determinants of health matter most for their uh, at-risk population. And then we uh, offer the ability to supply uh, needed social determinants of health to providers and payers and pharmacies. And likewise, uh, we've created a, a unique uh, analytic environment for those that have uh, data scientists to be able to do really rich, deep, compliant uh, analytics. So we're, uh, we're serious about making a dent here. So can you take us a little bit step-by-step step of um, how SDOH analytics works? Yeah, there's, there's three products. So the first thing is, is that you have to understand for your uh, patient population, or if you're a health plan, your member uh, members, which social determinants matter most. Oftentimes, social determinants feels like an abstract concept, and there are so many choices. So how do you choose? Well, the first thing that we do is we offer a portrait service. So give us a population that matters to you and we will go do the analysis for you. We'll tell you whether it's uh, healthcare literacy or access to uh, healthcare, uh, food vulnerabilities, uh, uh, whether it's uh, uh, broken down by ethnic disparities, no, no matter what the, um, the life circumstance is, We'll, we'll go identify it for you. And then armed with that, you can prioritize your initiatives to, to do something about it. So we think that's the initial gateway service. And oftentimes that can lead to, oh, great. Uh, I understand that it's really uh, healthcare literacy that matters most. So we can supply that information to a, a, a payer or a provider uh, to be able to fill that information gap that they have about their uh, patients or members. And then for, uh, uh, for certain uh, customers who have the uh, necessary analytic expertise and they wanna do uh, their own unique analysis, we have a secure compliant environment exactly for, uh, for that purpose. Great, and then in pharmacy specifically, how can pharmacies that are expanding into corporate retail clinics utilize this resource? Yeah, the pharmacies that are doing that are making a strong statement about the importance of population health. Um, and, you know, understanding the totality of your customer's life beyond the prescriptions that he or she uh, picks up is vitally important. Uh, so having the ability to, you know, connect to other information about that uh, customer, uh, whether that be information that is from a clinical experience or information that is about a social determinative health just provides a vital information platform for those who you know want to uh, have a population health uh, oriented mentality to their to their customers and are there other resources like this currently out there um, I, I don't really think so. Um, there are certainly data sets uh, that are available. Uh, you know, there are geodemographic uh, data sets. But the hard part of this is actually taking it and linking it to HIPAA regulated data. Um, and I can, you know, it's my, my Thomas Edison example again. That is really hard to do. And to be able to connect what happens in a clinical setting with life circumstances reliably at scale is a serious technological challenge. And you know, we've, we've solved that. The second part is you know, generally we're dealing with de-identified data 
And one of the things that you need to be careful with is that when you take clinical data that has been de-identified and you start to add other descriptive information about those customers, you can very easily uh, end up re-identifying people, and that's that's a that's a really bad outcome. So we built this uh, secure, always-on compliance environment for those who want to do advanced analytics, and they can do that knowing that the system will be checking every query, every output, you know, to make sure that you remain on side with uh, with HIPAA. Because the last thing that you want, as you're trying to do something that is really um, you know, progressive in serving customers. Last thing you want to do is to create an environment, a, a situation where you accidentally uh, re-identify uh, someone. That would be not a good, uh, not a good outcome. And what does Change Healthcare hope that this resource will lead to? Well, our country right now spends about twice per capita on healthcare of any other developed country. Uh, we rank number 43 in the world in life expectancy. So we're spending a lot of uh, money and we're not getting our money's worth. So what do I hope it comes to? I want uh, our healthcare system to be more affordable for Americans. I want our loved ones to live healthier lives, you know, longer uh, with us. So, you know, our, our mission at Change Healthcare is to inspire a better healthcare system. And we hope that this service will enable uh, payers and providers alike to, to do exactly that. And what do you see as the key takeaways on this topic? Um, it's the ability to convert social deterrence of health from an abstract concept into specific steps that you can take to do something about it. That's what the portrait analysis will do. It will help you uh, remove the abstraction of social determinants, the confusion of social determinants, and to prioritize which of them actually have the most significant impact on your patients, your members, your, your customers. And armed with that, then you can prioritize the programs that are likely to make a difference. And where you have information gaps, we can help you fill those. And where you have desires to do advanced analytics on social, that are social determinants based, we can help you do that as well. Tim, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Really appreciate it. Gabrielle, I'm uh, so happy that uh, we've spent time together and uh, we, uh, we look forward to uh, the uh, success of uh, this program across healthcare in America. So thank you.